license is a making a cell-based autonomous biosensing microsystem and we would like to in the objectives demonstrate the feasibility in this um, in this program uh, and the scientific objective is really to study to to span different mo cell model to try to to see what kind of a, a toxicology assay we can make and also in parallel to adapt the new sensing methods that are ad adapted for uh, in situ monitoring without a heavy biology lab uh, and of course uh, keeping the cells alive in a remote uh, manner. So once we have the cell, uh, what we will build, we build around the cells a small microbioreactors uh, which provides nutrients to the cells and uh, temp uh, temperature control and then uh, these cells will be exposed to the environment so this is for instance a river but this could be also in the lab a sample where you'd like to check the toxicity or a drug that you want to test. Uh, if, you, if it's a sample for environment, you have to adapt the osmolarity, you have to empty in and mix. Then, most important is this sense one you maintain, you'd like to measure uh, the status of these cells in a label-free uh, method. And we have developed different type of sensors. Here is an a, a, a epithelial resistance sensor here is an impedance sensor, fluorescence sensing, and a force sensing. All these sensors uh, are in the cell culture. And out of the nutrients, you can also monitor some analytes like the glucose consumption, the pH, or amperometry if your cells are <coughs> developing uh, some electroactive compounds. And this way, you can, you can monitor. Uh, and at the end, we want to make an autonomous system and what you have, you, you have to control these sensors, the pumps, uh, the sample in, uh, process all the signals, and finally it is going to be connected to, uh, uh, to the network, GSM network, and you can run autonomously and uh, operate it uh, in, a, in the perfect manner. <coughs> you will see in this presentation, it's quite unusual, I have invited virtually all the members of the different groups, and there will be a series of small videos, short videos, uh, uh, presenting snapshots of activities. These are not professional videos. Please uh, 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 apologize for that, but this was more to show, give an opportunity for the people to introduce themselves. All the members uh, of the projects here are listed and they will be appear in video. We have the, the people from EPFL, from ETH Zurich, uh, <coughs> in University of Applied Science in Sion, uh, UNIL, uh, University of Lausanne, CSCM, and uh, somebody who is here in the room who is not appearing in the videos, he's our uh, advisor for the application, uh, is Michael Riediker. Oh, is it Michael and Riediker? He's here. Uh, <laughs> um, <coughs> advising us on the uh, application side and, and, toxic, so, to, and toxicology monitoring. I, I show you the first example. Uh, these are our partners from UNIL. They explore the, the fluorescence measurements with uh, modified bacteria. In our lab, we are developing bacterial bioreporters to detect environmental pollutants. For example, in Bangladesh, a bioreporter system has been successfully applied in the field. These genetically modified bacteria react to the presence of a target compound like arsenic and produce an easily measurable signal. We can rapidly and easily measure the bioavailable fraction of pollutants at a low cost. So for life science project, we are developing a microchemist at a chip and the goal is to actively maintain bioreporter cells in a microchamber for one week. Then using microfluidic valves, every time we need to perform a measurement, we expose part of these cells to arsenic. This is the lab view program that controls the opening and the closing of the valves. And now we connect all the tubings. We inject the cells in the chip. We are filling the chamber with the cells. 
here you can see the cells that are coming. When we want to give some nutrients to the cell, we open the valves before and after the chamber. In the measurement zone, there is a filter that retains the cells while the arsenic solution can pass through the filter holes. The fluorescence intensity produced by the cells increases with time and after 180 minutes we can determine the arsenic concentration present in the aqueous solution. Yes, yeah, I'm going a little bit closer. Okay. Like this? Yeah, it's fine. Uh, I, I must say that uh, all this, what you have seen until now, is uh, designed to be compatible with the system integration, so that you really, really find all these modules compatible and will be integrated, you will see at the end. Now I present another act, uh, way of, of sensing. Any living cell sitting on a surface applies forces, and as soon as pollutants are interfere with the vitality of the cell or finally even kill the cell, the forces that a cell can apply to the substrate are reduced. So um, a broad range of pollutants can cause these type of effects. Um, pollutants, for example, that uh, impact the um, membrane functions, uh, pollutants that impact uh, the contractility of cells, motor proteins, the cytoskeleton, and certainly also other factors that in interfere with the force generation of cells can be monitored. Here we want to show you our engineered nanopillar arrays. They are made of elastic polymer. Cell then sitting on top of it. Cell apply a mechanical force to the pillars and deflecting them. So here the video shows how the cell move along on top of the pillar. Then cell deflect the pillar one after the others. And all together are 2,000 pillars per cell. If the cell gets exposed to a toxin, you see how a living a vital cell is turning into a lame duck within um, about 10 to 15 minutes. So with this we demonstrate that we can indeed use these nanopillar arrays to measure toxins in the environment. And now this is the last part, this is the, really the system integration. System integration is, is done by, by our uh, friends at, in Sillon and uh, they will present, uh, how you will be back in some of the sensors, so we have selected two things for the system integration, the bacterial sensors and the epithelial cells, and this is the movie of CO. Within the project Life Science, the University of Applied Sciences of Western Switzerland has to integrate living cells as biosensors, which are developed, chosen, and tested by other groups. In a first step, we have chosen the biosensors which are suitable to be implemented in a small portable and standalone systems. The first choice was genetically modified bacteria engineered by the group of Jan van der Meer of the University of Lausanne. In contact with arsenite in water, this bacteria produce a GFP which stands for green fluorescent protein. Water collected by the standalone system is brought to a microfluidic chamber in which bacteria are concentrated. The amount of GFP is a function of the time and the concentration of arsenide. Previous studies and reference comparison on boards allow the measurement of the arsenide concentration in water. This is done by exciting the GFP with the blue light and measuring the green fluorescent light after blocking the blue excitation light with an optical filter. Repeating these measurements every five minutes allows the calculation of the concentration of arsenide. The results are sent via a GSM module to a mobile phone. Other groups are working on different biosensors such as electrical conductivity on epithelial tissue of C2B BE1 cells developed by CSEM.
so this is the end of the videos, but uh, so we, you see that we have integrated two systems. One system for the epithelial cells is here and it will be shown on the, on the, on the poster session. And for the other, and this is the, the last part of the presentation, uh, we have, uh, as I said at the beginning, we, we have the other system with the bacterial cell that is in Sion now, and that will be activated by Frédéric uh, by s we will with sending an SMS. So I will try now to go to this system. Yeah. <laughs> I need to let it bring down. Three times. So the light will turn on here, and then after a few seconds there will be the fluorescence measurement that will be turned on. And once this fluorescence measurement is done in the cells, these are really with, this is really with cells, he will get an SMS with the value of the fluorescence that is measured on the cells. Uh, it's busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can tell you yesterday I, I called myself and I, I ended up in the voicemail. <laughs> <laughs> so these are demonstrators. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's blinking and then after a while they should see something here that is measuring and then we should hear on the phone of Frederick the answer so you will tell us with the number. Yeah, it takes some time because it's turning on. Yeah, this is here. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I will end up my uh, presentation by on the, uh, on this uh, slide and uh, and now I we this time for questions maybe. Yeah. Thank you for your attention. She's a breath of life